Hey guys, it's Kevin from Cruising with Wheels and today we have a subscriber requested video. You heard me right. They asked for it and now I'm going to give them the information they need. Stick around. So we received a lovely comment on one of our other videos from a subscriber. Her name on YouTube is Mom of Four Nicole, and she writes, Hey, I'm Nicole. I just adore you and the hubby's channel. I've never been on a cruise, but I so want to plan going on one. I have learned a lot from your channel. Not sure if you made a video on this, and if not, I'd love one. I was pricing a cruise, and I noticed all these different types of rooms. Upper, lower level. What's the difference? Can you please do a video on different room types? Also, do you all bring cash or use credit cards while on a cruise? As far as food, what's the average meal price of dinner or lunch? Do y'all bring snacks? I'm sure I'll have more questions for you later. XOXO from Texas. Well, Nicole, this is for you and for all new first-time cruisers or maybe cruisers who never noticed before that there are indeed different room types, but there are also different room categories. And I'm going to go through those for you and try to make it a little bit easier to understand. So the first uh, thing that I'd like to say is there are um, some rules of thumb uh, with, with cabin types. There are generic terms such as inside, outside, or ocean view, balcony or verandas, sometimes they're called, mini suites, suites, and the haven if you're on NCL. The Haven is basically a ship within a ship, and that's where most of the suites will be located. But don't be confused between a suite and a mini suite, because they're very different. So within uh, all of these types of rooms, um, you will have pretty much all the same kind of things, basic same kind of things. Uh, there'll be beds, bathrooms with showers, a safe, a TV, and adequate storage for all of your belongings. So don't worry about bringing too much, although we always suggest packing light. Now, within these cabin types that I just mentioned, there are different categories. Now, what does that mean? Basically, uh, the different categories um, will be, for example, like in an inside cabin. It might be I for inside, A, IB, IC, ID. It will vary between um, cruise lines, how they choose what they're going to name those categories. But basically what it is, is the different category delineates possibly how many of the cabin sleeps, um, where it's located, whether it be forward, midship, or aft. Usually midship will be the uh, premium price uh, category for whatever type of room you're selecting. Uh, it also might delineate how close you are to amenities. Uh, and there'll be a range of prices within your cabin type. So in other words, you may be looking up for a cruise right now and see that an inside cabin starts at $400. But you've selected a cabin and it's costing you $600. Why? Because you've selected a higher category. It's either because it's in a more favorable location or it sleeps more people uh, it's higher up, so it's closer to the restaurants or the pool. So I'm going to start out with an inside cabin. And what does an inside cabin mean? 
typically they'll be the least expensive in the smallest cabins on the ship. They will probably be on all of the decks uh, that house cabins. Of course, from its name, an inside cabin is in the interior of the ship and uh, will probably not have any windows. However, on some ships, like uh, the Royal Caribbean ships, they offer interiors with a view of the promenade. Uh, the promenade would be inside the ship where the sh some shops are and restaurants um, and they're really neat rooms. Uh, but they also offer on some of the ships uh, in different cruise lines virtual balconies. A virtual balcony room is an interior room that one wall is for lack of a better description, a television screen. And it will show you what it looks like outside. We find that for light sensitive cruisers, inside cabins are a great choice. And let's face it, you're usually not in the room anyways. Get in on deck and enjoy the ship and weather. The next cabin type is an ocean view. Now, an ocean view is not much larger than an inside cabin. What you're paying for is the view. Ocean views will have the same features and very often are the same size as an inside cabin. However, you will have a porthole or holes, which is a small round window, a large picture window, and in some cases, floor to ceiling windows. Of course, it will depend on the category of the ocean view. The higher the category, the more amenities like those large picture windows or floor to ceiling windows and thus will be reflected in the price of the cabin. We find that ocean views are a great option for cruisers who don't want to be in an inside cabin because they feel like they might be claustrophobic and don't want to spend the higher cost for a balcony. An ocean view will afford you a view outside. The light coming in is lovely and you won't be claustrophobic in that inside cabin. The next cabin type you'll see is a balcony or sometimes it's called a veranda cabin. These rooms generally are slightly larger than the ocean viewer inside cabins and they will include a private balcony. Private balconies are so great because very often it's nice to open up that door and get that ocean breeze coming in or maybe you want to get away from the hustle and bustle of the party that's going on in the pool deck. You will have that luxury if you book an if you book a balcony cabin. Did you know that some cruise lines also offer breakfast or dinner on your private balcony? That's right. Of course there'll be an additional fee for that service, but it would be great for a birthday, anniversary, or just celebrating with that special someone on your vacation. Also, some balconies connect that's right, they connect to the stateroom on either side of you. This is great for families who've decided to book multiple cabins as long as you book them all together in a cluster. So in other words, uh, cabin one, cabin three, and cabin five. Very often they can open up the separators between those balconies so that your family can enjoy one, two, three times the size balcony just for your uh, party. Our next cabin type that we're going to talk about is mini suites. Now I don't want you to get too excited about a mini suite because very often it doesn't mean that you're going to have two separate rooms. However, usually you'll have a curtain or some type of divider to separate the living space from the sleeping space. Very often, uh, mini suites will have 
a tub shower combination instead of just the standard shower. They will be slightly larger than a balcony room and will usually have a slightly larger balcony to reflect that it is a mini suite. And sometimes if you book a mini suite you will get um, priority embarkation, disembarkation, and a few other perks like priority tendering or maybe um, priority specialty dining reservations. So a mini suite's a great option if you want to save a little money by not booking a suite, but have those few extra perks to make you feel extra special on your cruise. The final cabin type is suites and haven. Now, if you want to feel like a VIP, then you should consider booking a suite or if you're traveling on NCL, the Haven. Now, the Haven is specific to NCL and uh, is where all their suites will be located. Uh, it will be key card access only, so only the people that are traveling in the Haven suites will be allowed into the Haven area. And very often they will have their own dining room, uh, a private pool area, and hot tub area, maybe a workout room. It depends on the ship. However, people that are traveling in the Haven can also take advantage of all the great things that that ship has to offer as well. Now, if you book a suite, um, they range from basic two-bedroom uh, suites to much larger multi-room suites, some with three or four bedrooms, some up to 4,000 square feet. Can you believe it? Very often they will have their own hot tub, uh, larger balconies, uh, and sometimes multiple balconies. I've been in some suites that actually have two balconies one facing forward and one facing the side of the ship. You'll have lots of extra space, usually lounge chairs on your balcony, extra perks such as a private lounge or pool to enjoy, uh, butler service, that's a big plus, and very often a concierge service which will assist you in booking your specialty restaurants, maybe giving you some advice about where to shop when you're in port or booking that excursion. Who wants to wait in line when you've booked a suite, right? Also, when you book a suite, you very often get extra perks like priority embarkation, priority disembarkation, priority tender tickets, and priority dinner reservations at the regular dining venues and the specialties. Sometimes, if you book a suite, you'll also get extra loyalty points. Speaking of loyalty points, keep an eye open for our video on MSC Loyalty Points Match Program. Now within all these different cabin types, as I mentioned before, there are multiple categories. And that just means that uh, it might be in a more favorable location, uh, it might be um, a little larger. It might have extra accommodations for a third or fourth guest. So make sure you read the fine print about what that category number means before you book your cruise. So I hope that clears up the cabin uh, type and category uh, portion of your question, Mom of Four Nicole. Uh, as far as uh, the portion where you asked um, uh, what the typical price for a dinner or lunch would be, um, most cruise lines, as a matter of fact, all cruise lines, include um, dining venues for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They will be complimentary. There's always a buffet as well. And um, very often there are specialty restaurants which will range in price uh, depending on the cruise line. 
they start around five dollars and can be as much as thirty dollars a person and in some cases they are a la carte uh, so it would work like as if you were going to a local restaurant whatever you order that's what you pay for um, as far as do we take credit cards or cash with us we do both we take cash for spending on shore and we always use a credit card uh, for our onboard spending account it just makes the process a whole lot easier we have a few videos on that very subject that I will link above for you and if you check out the description I'll also include a link to our snack video because that was a great question we always bring snacks with us. You just have to watch that video and you'll find out what and why we bring. So as always, we want to remind you to travel safe and cruise often. Take care.